Okay, let's do this. Hello. Oh my gosh, talking like this is so weird. I just bought some gouache and I thought I'd do a little video making the palette because it's exciting and you know, what better to take our mind off viruses than play with some colour. As you can see, you can get all of like, these colours, make all of these colours, and figure out how to get a full colour spectrum. And even if you don't have like a fire engine red, you can make one. This is very orange. The two reds, the pink and the orange more accurately. That's pretty good actually. Oh wow. Oh yes. Oh wow. Yes. Let's see how this goes. So, I've heard that, ooh, hello, gouache doesn't do as well as watercolour in little pans. So I don't want to put too much in there in case I hate it, but let's try it out anyway. Usually what I do with paints, which is how I was taught, is to get two, like a warm and a cool of all the primaries. So like a warm and a cool red, a warm and a cool yellow, and a warm and a cool blue. And by warm and cool it's like a cool red is closer to blue and a warm red is closer to yellow, a warm yellow is closer to red, and so on. But this time I wanted to get paints that were uh, light fast, just in case I want to actually sell um, original work. And I also wanted to get paints that were single pigment, because um, I figured if they're made up of other pigments I might as well just buy said pigments. And it's supposed to be better for colour mixing too, and that's what I like to do. And also because, oh my gosh, I don't have that much money. So I'd rather spend a little bit more time mixing colours and save some dollars. And the other thing I wanted was for everything to be vegan. And I'm pretty sure from my research that all of these particular Winsor & Newton colours are vegan. So yeah, I do have two reds and two blues. Ah. So it begins. But one thing that my dad always says, he's an artist too, is to buy a decent purple because it's really hard to mix like a true purple out of red and blue. Well, you can get a purple, but it's not like that royal purple. And this one I'm super excited about is gold. I love gold, but usually I scan everything, so there's no point. But hopefully it'll look super nice. Yay! Ask the housemates to hang out out the back instead of the front. And I can feel slightly less self-conscious about this video. Oh, water. Shit. Cool. So, usually I use watercolour. This is actually my first time ever trying gouache. But I'm also, I learnt acrylics before watercolour, so figure it's somewhere in the middle. Write the names or something. Or like list them all in the description. Yeah, paints in the this is very orange. This is quite the rainbow. I didn't quite intend to buy this much of an orange paint. <laughs> a little bit of a whoops moment. But oh well. It's a nice orange. At least it's not the same as the red. That would be 
more of a whoops moment. Uh, you know what people usually do? See how pigmented things are when they go with black. That's a very gouache video thing to do. You can tell that I usually do watercolour, but that's fine. So why I chose to um, buy a bunch of gouache is partly because, um, well, okay, so it's, I've been doing watercolour for many years now, like, I don't know, six years or something, mostly, mostly since I moved out of home, um, because I used to do digital art more of the time, but, um, I moved out and didn't have a great computer. So I thought it would have been so painful, my little netbook could barely run Photoshop, let alone like not lag while I drew. So I went to watercolour, and also because I found that people would look at my work and sort of be impressed but not really know, like understand it, and it's not like a super, or it wasn't like an established aesthetic that people really like know and respect. I wonder which one is... More green. Let's test it out. Yeah, I think that one's definitely more green. So I should switch them around in my palette. Oopsie. <laughs> Let's just paint over. What am I saying? So then I like got a fancy phone for free from a friend and did some art on there and people were like, oh my god, you that's amazing, you did that on a phone? And I'm like, why don't people react to this like this when I do digital paintings on the computer? And my friend was like, yeah, who also does digital painting. Um, people don't really understand like what goes into it or like the process, but everyone has a phone. Um, so, I moved to watercolour. I also really love it, that's another reason I did it. And I wanted to be able to like go outside more, do things in the outer world. And I often in my digital work was using like textures and stuff, like coffee textures I made myself. I'd like plonk that in there to make everything look better. And I was like, why don't I just actually like use all the magic of the textures that it's made itself. Anyway, so I've enjoyed doing watercolour and line work stuff for years now, um, but I felt a bit stuck and a bit um, just like burnt out and a bit bored, honestly. And I hadn't really figured this out and was like, why don't I feel like making art? I love making art. Oh god, why? This is what I want to make my career. Why am I no longer having fun? And I think that's for a lot of reasons, but. One of them, oh wow, it's like drying really pink, that's more like what I saw on the internet, interesting. Yeah, one of the reasons is just that I wasn't, I didn't have like novelty and excitement. So I thought, let's splurge on some new paint instead of going insane in lockdown. And yeah, so here we are, gouache. I think it'll go really well. I also really miss going from like, um, light to dark. It's one of the reasons that I chose watercolour in the first place because I'm like there's an end point. I can't work on it anymore after a certain point. I just have to go through the same process and that'd be great for client work. It's recognisable but also I can't finesse forever. But actually, I don't know, my work looks a bit controlled and I want to look freer and I'm just excited to try something new and hopefully I'll do more videos with gouache on this channel, which has previously just been my music, um, lol. So I thought I'd start with the start. Do I like, mix this really thick? Okay, cool. And I thought for the other side, I'd add white and see what happens. It's a pretty yummy colour. Okay, so it's that one. That's the one we're working with. Oh wow, that's a really nice purple. Maybe I didn't need to buy the purple. Oh, looks a little bit different. 
What have we got? Blue, pink, this way. That's all I do. And I'm just trying to mix them kind of in the middle. Obviously, you could go either way. That's so flat, that's so nice. And yet another purple. It's pretty cool. Like a grey purple. It's gonna take a lot longer than I thought. And pinky crap. That's a jump. <laughs> Oh, that's so nice. I could do a painting in that combination. Wait, I put the line in the wrong spot. The two reds, the pink and the orange more accurately. See if we can make a true red, because that's kind of important. Yeah, that's not too bad. That's pretty good, actually. Right, so really it's this line. Lovely brown. Alright, now it finally gets exciting. Nice. Oh, that's so good. Oh, wow. That's pretty close to the green that I bought by itself. How close is it? I mean, it's obviously more pastel. Yeah, still happy I bought the bright one. With um, watercolours, I always think I'll just like buy the darkest, most pigmented colours possible and then I can just mix them with water and they get lighter. Like why would you ever <laughs> buy like pastel watercolour when it's so easy just to make it pasta with water. So that was my kind of thinking this time and then I realised that a bit different with this because uh, I want to actually have bright pigmented opaque paints to put over the top of other paints and if you mix them with water that's not what's going to happen and I was like oh so that's part of why I bought this <sighs> lovely turquoise oh wow turquoise and purple that's nice where are we what the hell is going on? This is exciting. Alright. Turquoise. That would be really good for like a sky. Oh yes. Oh wow. I thought the other one was good for a blue sky, but that's like... I grew up in Western Australia. What's the indigenous name for Perth again? Bulu? I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it obviously, like honestly, but like Noongar country and the sky is like that and often with the blue sky I like I feel like my ancestors like obviously being colonizers and white just my skin is not not evolved for this so with the sky that color I was like oh no I'm gonna get burnt I need to like hide under scarves and silk shirts and things but now, living on Wurundjeri country, Victoria, in Melbourne, I'm like, oh my god, it's sunny outside, it's getting, it's winter here too, well, it's not winter, it's, it's autumn, it's almost, almost salmon, and it's getting uh, quite cloudy and sad, and I kind of relate more to like, English culture, of being like, oh my god, the sun's out. Oh, I want to know what it looks like. Just some water. Water. Oh, yes. I used to think this was dumb. Like, well, not dumb, but just I could not be bothered. But I actually used one of these charts with my watercolours and went about okay. Mostly with green. If I'm trying to figure out what kind of green I want, I just look at the chart and see what looks closest to it and go from there. Oh. Swatch is finished. So now it's color wheel time. Oh, that's right. I was gonna make it less opaque in the middle. I mean, not opaque, um, saturated. That's the word I'm looking for. 
that's what we're doing. <laughs> Alright, so we need that fire engine red. I might actually just show you what I'm working from. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and chuck the yellow, because that will just be the plain pigment. I thought I'd go ahead and put the like blue blue in there. There you are. Is this ultramarine? And I guess the point of doing this is like, I want to learn how to achieve all of the parts on the color wheel with the paints that I have available to me. Probably be nice actually to... And now we've got... Yeah, that'll be nice and bright. Maybe we should add some white. Purple is not super bright, but let's go for it anyway. Maybe some white in this one too. Alright, and obviously when we get opposite colours, like there's yellow and purple, those ones are just straight out of the tube, except for some white here, yellow and purple make brown. and yeah, if you want to make black even, you can just like add all of the colours together. <laughs> you do it real well with dark colours and go to black. So, that's how we can get like less saturated colours. Like this looks like bubble pop painting, like this is literally painting a rainbow, but if I'm painting like a scene, like with a bunch of trees or something, like unless I'm going to go really stylized, I'm not going to use like one of these colors for the bark. It'll probably be like, here's some wood. This is like a wood color that I'm trying to get this year. <laughs> so what I can do is add the opposites. Oh my gosh, do you know what I want to do? I want to try the gold. I mean, that's so pretty. Um, and if you really know me, <laughs> you'll know that I love um, putting yellow over blue, and another thing I love is gold on blue. I mean, that's pretty nice, but I do wish it was a bit more opaque. I wonder if I can glob some paint in there. It's a little bit hard to work with, right? Glob. That's pretty amazing. Yes. See that? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Let's start with something easy. Purple and yellow. And now do that again, but with a bit more on the yellow side. So if I wasn't clear before, I'm just adding these two together. More purple, more yellow. All right, blue and orange. So to be clear, I'm doing this with a bit of that and mixing it with this blue here. It's a nice brown. Yeah, this is mostly just going to be shades of brown. How are I doing these ones? So that was turquoise and yellow. Ooh, that's still what you, you were, ah oh yes, these two. So that's these two, what were you again? Ah oh yes that blue and yellow. I'm so excited about this colour. So good. So that's a muddy mess. That's what we want. Cool. Finally. Oh, that one took way longer than I thought it was going to. And I guess we should try out the black too, hey? I didn't really feel like swatching it. I know what <laughs> black's gonna do to the colours make them darker. Obviously we haven't tested opacity at all. kind of want to do that actually. What happens if I put... Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, I cannot do this with watercolour. What about some pastel purple? Yes! 
Alright, I think that will do. I might actually... Oh, actually, let's see what happens. No, I want it to be more pastel. Lighter, lighter, light on dark. Ah, Alright, so thanks for watching this exploration in paint. I might actually try and paint something now after I have some dinner or something. Yeah, so as you can see, you can get all of like, these colours, make all of these colours, and even if you don't have like a fire engine red, you can make one and figure out how to get a full colour spectrum. Um, yeah, and I'll put, I'll write the names of the paints and put an image on the screen now. So if you want to get any of these, you can. Um, cool, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll get less awkward about this as time goes on, and I'm excited to play with some gouache. I hope this has given you some joy or just a distraction, some calmness, and yeah, uh, bye!